I've been wearing this glucose monitor for quite some time, and I've heard that if you cook and then cool a sweet potato before you eat it, it doesn't spike your blood sugar as much. Well, let's find out. The first night, I made a dinner that consisted of skirt steak, kale salad, and a fresh hot sweet potato. When you pop into the Levels app and then scroll down to dinner, you can see that it caused a gentle rise, which is actually pretty good. The uh, total rise in blood sugar was 18 points, which is a score of seven out of 10. The very next night, I reheated the sweet potato. And if you look at my meal log in the Levels app, you'll see- So it was a continuous blood glucose monitor, like this device that you hook up to your arm and check your blood glucose after meals. Is that useful for weight loss or for your overall health? I'm Dr. Imam, I'm a board certified allergist and obesity specialist. See allergy and weight loss. And let's talk about why you might benefit from one of these and when you might not. So first things first, this thing has a little filament that goes and samples fluid out of the interstitial space and allows it to estimate your blood glucose. And it's pretty quick. Essentially, you put this on on the back of your arm and then usually using an app, you can use a phone or Bluetooth and just kind of swipe it and it gives you an immediate read of your blood glucose levels. Physiologically, when you consume food, um, especially carbohydrates, your blood glucose levels will go up and then your body will release insulin and drop it back down again. So you might wanna use this for one of three reasons. One is gonna be you have diabetes. Number two is for longevity. And number three is for weight loss. Let's we'll start with diabetes. This is a really good tool if a person is on insulin for their diabetes, especially people with type one diabetes or people with type two diabetes who are on insulin. Typically insurance will cover this if a person does have diabetes so they can get it prescribed by their endocrinologist and there's no reason to use like a third party app or an online startup to get it. Okay, the second reason is for weight loss. Now, traditionally for weight loss, this is 50-50. It depends on how you approach the weight loss. If you were to consume pure butter, this will not spike because the pure butter will not convert to glucose, so you won't see a spike in glucose, but you could still gain weight from doing that. The continuous blood glucose devices do not replace counting calories. If you remain in a calorie surplus, it does not matter whether or not you're seeing glucose spikes or not, you will still not be able to lose weight. So if you try to use this to replace this, um, for calorie counting, it doesn't work in that sense. And you can go a full 24 hours without spiking your glucose over 120, but still consume enough calories if those calories are coming from heavy fats and still have a hard time losing weight. Where it is helpful is there are people that we call dippers, that they can eat a food that spikes up their glucose and then they have this like transient, like subclinical hypoglycemia that makes them feel hungrier about two hours after a heavy carb meal. A person might benefit knowing that they're a dipper, but usually you can tell that you can just like, I crash after having a high carb meal, so I know I'm a dipper. Dippers tend to eat two to 300 calories more by the end of the day. Um, so being a dipper means that you typically wanna have a balanced meal that does have some fat, some protein and carbohydrate, so that it slows down the absorption of the carbohydrate or have a lot of fiber with your carbohydrates. You definitely wanna avoid fruit juices or drinks that have um, high carbohydrate content because they really spike the blood glucose levels. One way these devices are helpful is that sometimes when people know they have a device on and they know they're, they're, gonna about, they're about to eat a meal that's gonna spike their blood glucose levels, it might make them think twice. Like maybe they'll eat a vegetable instead of eating like a piece of chocolate or something like that. The last is people using it for longevity where they're trying to avoid crazy volatility in their blood glucose levels for them to live longer. I don't know of any great data on that, um, but you know, people like to manage metrics. Sometimes I like to manage metrics, so maybe it helps for that, but we'll see. Okay, one last thing is these are like $75 cash um, at a local pharmacy if you get a prescription from a doctor. So like you don't necessarily have to go to a expensive startup or join some crazy online program to get these monitors. They put a lot of interesting band-aids on it to make it seem like they're different, but they're all using the same device. They're all using this. This comes with a free app and it's $75 for a two-week supply for the sensor. Most people only need the sensor for about one month and see how they do with different foods. And after that, they don't really need to keep using it for like years on end. I know a lot of people who used it and it helped them kind of orient their meals and it did help them kind of figure out what to eat, especially if that person's kind of more data driven. And I know a lot of people who lost weight and have stable blood glucose levels and never needed one of these. In my weight loss clinic, some people ask for them, so we'll prescribe them and we'll walk them through how to avoid blood glucose spikes and what it means. I personally have used one before in the past and I've also gone without using it and there's been no difference for me but I have had patients who've benefited from it, especially when they were pre-diabetic, so that they could figure out what foods were not too good for them and uh, figuring out how to mix and match their meals in order to avoid glucose spikes. Okay, I hope that helps. If you have any questions about continuous blood glucose monitoring, please leave me a comment.